Hey morning comrades, so today marks the actual exactly two weeks since I left home and I got two more weeks left. Right now is 8.30. So the low, the low tide was at 6 and uh, this is now uh, kind of like halfway in pretty much. Something in the trap, but... Oh yeah, we're still moving. So, oh, interesting. So something was in my crab shell. It's in the trap here, but it's eaten somehow. Then there is small rock crab here, and it's kind of small. I have to let it go, and it's also female. The tide is coming quick. Not much here going on for clams. Well, small ones like yesterday, but I'm kind of. Not too interested in those at this point right now. So I'll just uh, pick some oysters for later today to lunch. We got about 15 oysters. The limit is 25, but whatever. Water started coming in. I don't want to go dig more for tiny ones, whatever. Good enough. The morning walks I'm bringing the guy to freak out or something. That's like the pose. I hold him like this so he doesn't scratch me. He can't like yeah he, he nothing he does because I already have all my hands arms scratch quite a bit from early days. So I figured this is the pose now. But there you go. Ah, there you go. Go for it. Uh -oh, uh -oh. No, no. Go where you want just recently. Yeah, this way. Okay, so I kind of need to stock up on water. I was really contemplating where to go. Should I track back to Port Alberni and go to Fino? There's a couple of spots potentially to stay. Uh, this side is all open for climbing and stuff. Uh, there's a spot in near Euclid to kind of stay. Uh, or pay for campground, it's obviously going to be overpriced there, but uh, public, maybe throw some crab trap of dogs during daytime, you know, this sort of thing, kind of lazy, couple of days, maybe stick around there, check out a couple of more exports from before trip, like free camping here actually, potentially free camping there, uh, or proved free camping there actually, uh, there is a, a Virgin Falls here to check out, or proceed north. Uh, you know, there's a couple of marked potential camping spots here, north of Campbell River, I had from previous trip, and then, or maybe make a push right away to Port Hardy. So filled up uh, all my free cans on the roof. That should uh, make my decision making a little easier in common days. Uh, knowing that I have uh, 40, what is it, 45? Uh, about, let's say, because they're not filled up fully, like 42 liters extra, so almost half a tank extra. Yeah, um, just more options, like if I decide to like, oh, okay, let's go side by all of a sudden or something. Engine light is back on. I actually, last time it's been back on, I didn't even uh, mention it in the video. But uh, every, mm, I don't know, couple of gas fill-ups or every couple of uh, stops, not stops, uh, starts, not every couple, more like 
every 10 starts or so. It keeps coming back. And uh, it has to do with that EVA uh, vapor uh, system, small leak thing, which is not dangerous and whatever. It has no effect on driving ability. Uh, but the system runs a diagnostic test every once in a while. So whenever it runs or triggers again, boom, engine light. And when I have engine light, I can the eco mode doesn't turn on. Uh, eco mode is uh, for cylinder shut off, so now I have my MPGs go down. So I'm basically sc scanning right now uh, to uh, clear the code. And it's gonna be gone again, probably like fourth time I'm doing it, uh, until in some X amount of days or whatever. Uh, but my eco mode is gonna be back, that's what I want. Provincial Park. Let's check it out. I'm really here to refill water and dump my garbage. Oh, it seems like it's really popular. Lots of kids. Um, as per usual, you know, if I stop by Provincial Park, I may as well check it out. Alright, not bad. For a provincial park. Yeah. It's kinda nice you have access. But I'm not sure. Well, this is the area. Uh, I think campgrounds are there. Or maybe they're not even uh, exposed to the sea here. Maybe you need to walk. I was right. There's like four or five of them arriving. Yeah, so the campground here is quite a walk from water. Not very cool. Little campground, small little sites, but I mean, really, so far away from water. So I'm happily dumping my garbage. Fill enough water here, and look at this. This little guy, he's just uh, cruising here, Mr. Wabbit. Well, he's obviously not domesticated. I wonder how close can I get. Hello. No. So I'm just south of Saratoga Beach. Need to pass Campbell River again. And then I'm gonna check out this potential camping spot. So if I zoom in, there is a little field thing. And network of trail continues, continues, continues hugging the coast to Elk Bay. There is Elk Bay free camp from my previous research thing. There's like a little, uh, oh, it's like forestry uh, logging, uh, very thin van. Trails continue here, connecting paths to uh, Rock Bay Marine Provincial Park. I don't see any campgrounds, nothing here, but there's like a little open field, a little bit away from water, covered by trees. And then trail continues, there is this uh, little bear free camp fin, which has river fin nearby. I can see there's like a car, a couple of cars parked, seems like RV. So yeah, let's, let's check that out. I remember those times two years ago when I was much lighter. You know, I was doing like 130 kilometers uh, easily on highways, passing everyone on mountain roads, passing Porsches and GTs and whatever. And I was bragging about it and now I'm living the sort of RV life, kind of dragging and slowly in a, uh, yeah, in a slow lane. That's because I don't want to stress out the truck too much. Uh, in fact, I'm right now going uh, hand 5 in fifth gear. Because uh, going to Baja last time, I did have that issue that the ownership couldn't resolve, couldn't find anything, but I had this like, shifting 6 overdrive gear to like fifth. Uh, I think after driving for many, many, many hours, uh, it just, the whole car kind of like, kind of like knocked, sort of uh, shifted, jerked. And ever since then, I 
like if it's normal highway, not mountainous straight, I just like okay, fine. Let let the computer, let the car decide to go into six gear, rarely seven gear, eight gear is pretty much <laughs> never happens. Autism, like, overweight. Um, but uh, also it's sluggish. Uh, even if I switch to tow mode, in fact, I no longer ride in tow mode, tow, tow haul mode. Because uh, I think that shifting is a little bit more aggressive uh, and in some cases I don't want it to shift so rapidly. Uh, so yeah, and now I think uh, in fifth gear obviously at this speed I'm going almost 3000 RPM, so my fuel consumption, uh, I'm usually averaging like 12 to 13 miles per gallon. Uh, According to computer, realistically probably one gallon less, right? Uh, computer is always showing higher numbers, uh, better numbers. But whatever, let's pretend it's 12, 13 average. Uh, uh, the thing is, I rather be easier on the gearing, the transmission, all that, and let the engine do the work. Uh, you know, doing the speeds, especially like I'm facing wind right now, doing 110. Because if I do allow it to go into 6th and 7th gear, uh, when it goes up hill and stuff, before it even switches to 5th, what I notice is my uh, transmission temperature starts to go up, right? So beyond like 2010 Fahrenheit and so on. It, it's still not critical level, but obviously I know there is more stress on uh, the whole drivetrain thing uh, rather than the engine. And I rather, because this engine is powerful, I rather it just, sure, for a while, do 3000 RPM, whatever. Oh, but uh, but in this mode, unfortunately, uh, controlling my shifting, like forcing it to be in fifth gear, you don't get eco mode. Uh, so no more four cylinder shut off. It depends. If, if I see a long stretch coming up of descent on the highway, some mountainous road, I may actually unforce myself from fifth gear and switch to whatever after, so uh, kind of utilize the whole uh, four cylinder shut off. That's kind of like my strategy driving overloaded 1500. Let's have a look here at maps.me. So I'm just north of Powell River right here. There is a Brown's uh, Ripple Creek, no, Ripple Rock RV park right here. Uh, I passed. There is like a signage restaurant. Oh, you can eat uh, crab or something. I'm like, oh, oh I want to go back and check it out. Price is probably expensive, but all you can eat. It's like, oh, I want it. But there doesn't seem to be a connection i checked back road map book there seems to be from mountains here something but none of the other map show it i'm not sure however if i keep driving north that's the kind of official dirt road thing and it goes by roberts lake so i'm thinking i'm gonna go here check out roberts lake check out uh, recreational site and lots of them scattered here around these lakes around this coast this part of north vancouver right here i mean uh, uh, vancouver island okay and here is roberts lake uh, let's check out recreation site this northern free campgrounds are i guess accessible by canoes or boats only and this road is gonna lead right into elk uh, point fin so the real i guess recreational site where you can actually park and fin well i'm standing right here right like you could potentially park on the side of the road here take a tent and deploy somewhere there or there's some kind of a actual resort here Lakeside Resort and Recreational Site. Free or not, I don't know, but Southern is accessible.
but it's the first, si first time I actually see this sign ever camping out. Warning cougar in the area. So, they specifically mean this. They probably mean business. Uh, and that, those guys are worse than bears. Bear, you can at least spot from a distance. These suckers, right? Like, they're like cats. They're hiding, they're following you, they're watching you. You don't even know they're there until, boom, done. So, yeah, I'm not gonna be walking uh, at night without my arsenal on the belt of stuff. Two recreational sites. First one, if I go straight there, that's like a little bay thing. And then that one, I wanted specifically go to that one right away because uh, I'll get a better view of the lake from it. take this spot well if I were to stay here and I don't know like there's options I could potentially stay here today and move to that elk point by the sea tomorrow there's like so many options in this area of free stuff see like this type of forest I'm pretty sure if I walk around there there's, there's gonna be some mushrooms this side is nice there's much yeah, good stuff. If my solar set up, it actually would be better to park close to the road here. There is enough space for a truck or someone to come here and launch the boat. So, good enough. Poor guy was sleeping, but I just have to grab him. It's like a cool little bridge area here. It's kinda got shade. He's like poking in and out, in and out. Mm -mm -mm. I think uh, I think he'll be swimming today. All right, kinda walked on the roof. Walked in the woods, walked on that thing. Yeah, he's going to sleep. I kind of woke him up, I'm like, okay, deploy it, it's so nice. Me as well. But, holy crap. So hot. Super hot. First time I actually undressed. A little breeze coming in, that's a godsend. Probably nothing's gonna happen. But I deployed through over there one of my crayfish traps. Yeah, there's not much rocks here, nothing, but we do like to hang out in this, like, uh, silt kind of thing, like wooden chunks and stuff. Maybe, but regardless, we're usually nocturnal, so probably won't know till tomorrow morning. Did a little bit of mushroom insertion, chanterelles, these guys, questionable, stripes, right? Another stripes, it's you never know. The colors look nice, smell is super nice, super nice. I'm not sure what these are. Let's see, to the light. Uh, time to open the book. It's velvet hooded packs. Interesting texture to it, the stump. This frequently collected mushroom is technically edible, but is in fact unpalatable. I could cook chanterelles on their own, a little batch, not a whole lot of them here, and then that thing on its own, and I don't know, see what it tastes like. What a beautiful sunset. Fish are splashing, but problem is my second rod, the reel is broken. I need to buy it actually at Port McNeil. So I have uh, two rods, one for fresh water, for salt water. Alright, so chanterelles go first. Yeah, I've always 
spice smells good. Of course, there's more garlic and onion here than actual mushrooms. The moon has come out. It's absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous sunset. So, oysters decided to cook and not eat raw. Well, I tried a couple. Fish sauce, a little bit of Thai spice, garlic, onions, whatever I had. Right, so, now trying the sketchy mushrooms, the velvet, whatever it was that I could, uh, mentioned. Uh, always cooking these mushrooms, you're gonna go to waste. Uh, Smells okay, but I just kind of don't feel like experimenting right now. And I want some real meal. You know, girls were snacks, all good. Just, uh, I don't know, don't feel like experiment. And I, I actually passed out. I woke up like an hour ago and I'm like, uh, okay. I was about to cook uh, chicken wind. So I'll uh, get to that, buffalo chicken wings, I got them like, what, two days ago? Where have been in the fridge. I'll do that. See you next episode. Hey comrades, don't forget to hit that like button and also leave a comment. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you should by hitting that subscription button and also bell notification next to it. So you can actually get my video updates, both in notification and your video feed. And as well, you can support this channel if you like my videos through PayPal or Patreon in the links down below or just after this video.